Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Amazon Pharmacy versus GoodRx. So, as many of you know, it was recently announced that Amazon now has a full-blown pharmacy where you can now get prescription medications through Amazon.com. And many people have said, media, various news sources, how revolutionary this is. And I was like, okay, well, if it's revolutionary, like probably the thing that is most needed in healthcare to be revolutionary is the price, right? Healthcare is so expensive because everything is priced so incredibly high. So I'm like, okay, well, let's look at the prices. So I went through a list of medications and I compared the Amazon prices, just cash price if you didn't have any insurance, versus GoodRx. I mean, I'm not going to go through the GoodRx, how they get to those prices. That's another video for another day. I use the GoodRx app at Kroger. That's the grocery store where I go. That's the pharmacy that I use. So these are all the GoodRx prices at Kroger. Now, First drug, lisinopril. It's generic blood pressure medication, probably one of the most common generic blood pressure medications. Amazon's cheaper. It's $3.80 for a one-month supply, whereas with GoodRx, it's $5.88. Okay, next up, metformin, probably the most common generic diabetes pill. $3.50 on Amazon, $7.35 on GoodRx. Next up, levothyroxine, one of the most common medications, again, for people with hypothyroidism, which is incredibly common, especially in middle-aged and older women. Uh, $3.80 on Amazon, $11.77 on GoodRx and Kroger. Okay, so it's a lot less expensive there um, on Amazon. Okay, now let's go to the really high-priced brand name medications. Now that we've talked about some generics, okay, let's go to the most uh, highest revenue medication in America. If you're an employer or a broker benefit consultant watching this, then of course the very first drug that you want to search up when you look on Amazon is Humira because it is the specialty pharmacy injection medication that is costing you and your employees and your plans gobs and gobs of money. Okay, for a one month supply of Humira, which is two shots because you take it once every two weeks, it's $5,669. And on GoodRx at Kroger, it's $5,677. Okay, so Amazon is cheaper by $8. Okay, so this is not some revolutionary price difference where Amazon, through its buying power or whatever, is able to get some sort of dramatically lower cost on Humira. It's $8 a month different. Okay, next up, Eliquis, which is one of these new blood thinning medications instead of Coumadin or Warfarin, incredibly expensive. It is $480.50 a month on Amazon, it's $495.38. Okay, so it's $15 a month less on Amazon. Okay, like, that's that's a decent amount of money, 15 bucks a month, but that's not like huge, that's not like earth shattering. Okay, next up, Genuvia, which is probably the most common brand name diabetes pill that's taken. $483.50 a month on Amazon, and then $491.37 on GoodRx. Okay, so you're talking like $8 less a month for the Genuvia. Okay, so what can you gather from this? For both very common generic medications and for the brand name generics, Amazon is cheaper. So I thought to myself, okay, is this true for everything? And the answer is no. Amazon is not cheaper for all medications. Let's go through some examples. Levetiracetam, which is the generic name for Keppra, probably the most common epilepsy and seizure medication, is $41.30 per month on Amazon. It's only $12.18 on GoodRx. Okay, so in other words, Amazon is three times more expensive. It is $29 a month more expensive than GoodRx at Kroger. Next up, Duloxetine, which is used for depression and pain, it treats both at the same time, chronic pain, okay? $40.70 on Amazon, $12.73 on GoodRx. Again, Amazon is three times more expensive for duloxetine. It's an extra $28 a month on Amazon. Fluoxetine, which is generic Prozac, the, the oldest, longest running antidepressant um, SSRI. $18.20 a month on Amazon, $9.98 on GoodRx. GoodRx is like almost half the cost. Next up, 
Escitalopram, which is generic Lexapro. Again, one of the most common generic SSRIs used for depression. On Amazon, $14.60. On GoodRx, $9.44. Okay, Alprazolam, what's that? That's the generic form of Xanax, right? I'm not, listen, Xanax is kind of a controversial medication for treating anxiety. A lot of people take it. I won't even get into the clinical indication versus not clinical indication of it. But the point is, is that Amazon is $14.90 for a month's supply of Xanax, and GoodRx is only $9.82. So you can, so that begs the question, what's going on here? The levetiracetam, the generic Keppra, and all these medications, they're all psychotropic medications. They're all medications for your brain. And all of these are for mood disorders. They're all for depression. So is it just a coincidence that all the mental meds, all the depression meds, just happen to be more expensive on Amazon? That seems like an odd, I mean, what, are they, what does Amazon appear to be doing here? It appears as though they're doing the sort of the classic loss leader medications over here, and then they're trying to hit you with these higher margin, um, you know, generic psychiatric meds over here, right? So just like walking into Costco, they make your paper towel super cheap and hope you buy a flat screen TV for a whole bunch of money. Okay, so okay, so that's like a known retail strategy and there's nothing really revolutionary about that. If you look at Amazon Pharmacy, you cannot say that they're cheaper for everything because they're not. And then for some reason, they seem to have chosen mental meds and psych meds for what they're making most expensive. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention today. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.